For the three-hour season finale, the flashbacks once again cover multiple people, this time on their last night in Sydney up to boarding the plane. First up is Michael and Walt, which includes an anachronistic episode of Power Rangers SPD. Seriously, was it too hard to get a show that would exist the previous year? Anyway, it's just the usual stuff about their problems connecting. Jack is at the airport bar when he meets Ana Lucia Cortez, a regular for next season who is deliberately designed to be unlikable, which is probably the most terrifying thing in the show so far considering how much they've screwed up the supposedly likable characters. She and Jack both have seat numbers that include the cursed numbers, another pretty stupid use of them, though far from the worst in the finale, as we'll see later. We catch up with Sawyer at the police station as seen in Hearts and Minds, where we learn he headbutted some government guy. We also learn his real name is James Ford, but come on, have you ever heard a fan call him anything but Sawyer? He's banned for life from Australia. Kate's scene has the marshal actually spelling out what a sociopath she is, in response to which Kate attacks him right in the office in handcuffs. You really have to wonder just how self-aware these writers were sometimes. Shannon's entry just confirms what a bitch she is. Saeed asks her to watch his bag, and she then reports his leaving it to security. And I really don't see any reason to continue to be interested in their relationship after learning this, as little as there was to begin with. Sun scene just has her spilling coffee on Jin, and is pretty much pointless except for setting up Jin scene in part two. Danielle comes to the camp and tells her story, which includes that she was seven months pregnant when her team was shipwrecked. A week after the baby Alex was born, Danielle saw a pillar of black smoke shortly before the others kidnapped her. Oh yeah, this is the reveal that Alex was a girl. What a twist! Anyway, now she says they're coming back, not that she explains how she knows this, but Jack stays true to form and completely blows the whole thing off, instead getting everyone together to get the raft launched within the day. It doesn't work, which is naturally because of Sawyer, because it couldn't possibly be the fault of any of our perfect heroes Jack, Kate, or Locke, could it? That's when the smoke appears, and Danielle lets Jack know that their main problem now is hiding everyone. One more thing that wouldn't have been necessary with Saeed as the hero. This means it's time to tell everyone about the hatch, though we don't get to see what I'm sure was the hilarious image of Locke being dragged kicking and screaming over there. Danielle offers to lead them to the fabled Black Rock, which is where she's been getting all her dynamite. Hurley, thinking God knows what, spills the whole plan to Jerkass, who invites himself along, claiming to know a lot about dynamite. Jack gives a gun to Sawyer, apparently just on the Boy Scout motto, and in return, Sawyer tells him about meeting Christian. It's a great scene, and I only wish it was the end to Jack's daddy issues that it seemed to be at the time. Kate also invites herself on the dynamite trip because God forbid she not be involved in anything. Charlie collects messages to send on the raft and tries to look at Hurley's right after he's asked not to. Shut up, Charlie. And Kate has a little crisis over not being able to say goodbye to Sawyer. Try holding the plane, that can fix any problem, right? Locke sees that Danielle has scratches on her arm and is just so offended that she would lie to him about that. Then she announces that they're entering a place called the Dark Territory in French, just so Jack can show off that he understands. Or it could just be that she already told them the name in English and he's faking knowing French. I know which way I'd bet. No, no, no. This one goes there. That one goes there. Oh look, an Empire Strikes Back reference. Love us, kids. Jerkass turns out to be a coward and runs away, but comes right back being chased by Hillary. And then Hillary just leaves. That was anticlimactic. Danielle calls him a security system set up to protect the island. Unsurprisingly, we'll later learn that she's talking out of her ass, but still, what made her say this? Walt leaves Vincent with Shannon as a therapy dog like after his horrible evil mother died. Speaking of which, Saeed gives Michael a radar dish and a flare gun from Boone's death plane. The group arrives at the Black Rock, which turns out is a ship, which makes complete nonsense of Claire's diary entries, but hey, anything for a twist. Sun gives Jin a cheat sheet of English nautical terms, which gets them both to apologize and reconcile. As bad as the show got later, their relationship could always be counted on for genuine emotion, so it's even better when the rest is relatively good. The raft is launched and the emotion is undercut just a bit by the sail having a hole in it. Did no one think that would be a problem? Still, I can't deny it works very well.
My score for Exodus Part 1 is 10 out of 10. It really has that season finale feel. As the great J. Michael Straczynski put it, it takes all the threads laid out during the season and pulls them into a knot, with fantastic emotional resonance precisely because of the long time these things have been building. That's unfortunately going to go downhill a little bit in Part 2, and my choice for the show's absolute best episode is still in the future, but this one still stands as one of its all-time crowning achievements.